Let's go third way Whittier. How many are excited for what God's going to do today? How many know that God's going to speak today to our lives? Man, I'm super, super excited to be with you guys today. And I don't take this lightly, but I know that God brought me here with the message. And I'm ready to give it. But before that, I just want to acknowledge some people within my life. And uh, you can take your seat there where you are as well. I'm so grateful to God, first of all, for my salvation. I remember growing up and feeling, having a sense of no identity, having a sense of no belonging, having a sense of so many just problems within my life. But I remember it was a day where uh, I just gave everything to God. And everything just seemed to be a lot more better. Everything started to correct in my life. Everything started to change within my life as well. And I'm so grateful to God for my salvation. But I'm also grateful to God for the founders of our ministry, Pastor Sonny and Sister Julie Argenzoni. Why don't we give a round of applause for their life? And why do I say this? Because tonight we're in a service, a heart for the nations. And we know that it's through them that we're here today. So I'm so grateful for their life, grateful for their leadership as well. And I'm grateful also for your one and only third wave Whittier gang team. Why don't you give a round of applause to them? They've been doing a great job week and week and week behind week. And, and I'm so grateful for their life, but also for Pastor Joe and Sister Doreen for letting us be here as well. But I'm just excited and we're going to go into the word today. And I want you to go with me there to Daniel chapter 3. And the musicians can still make it sound spiritual. We're still going to do it. We're going to read the Bible. We're in the church, okay? You guys ready? Daniel chapter 3. And once you get there, you can say, I'm here. I'm ready. Any of those or uh, I'm here. Are we there? There's one ready. Okay, I think we're going to go. Daniel chapter 3, and it says like this. Nebuchadnezzar, the king made a gold image whose height, including the pedestal, was 60 cubits, and it's with six cubits. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then... The herald, that's in verse 4, the herald loudly proclaimed, You are commanded, O people, nations, and speakers of every language, that at the moment you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trion, dulcimer, bagpipe, and all kinds of music, you are all to fall down and worship the golden image that King, we're going to call him King Neb, because he's our friend right now. King Neb has set up, whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be thrown into the midst of the furnace of blazing fire. King Neb was, he had some problems. He had some anger issues. At the time, this is verse 8, at the time certain Chaldeans came forward and brought accusations against the Jews. See, these were people with power, with knowledge. They run the cities. Let's go to verse 12. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the administration of the province of Babylon named Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, pay no attention to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Neb, in a furious rage, gave a command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these men were brought before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if you're ready, when you hear me, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, we're just going to jump there, and it's going to say to the 16th 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to answer to you on this point. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to rescue us from the furnace of blazing fire, and he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, let it known to you, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. And with that, that's the title of my message. And the title of my message is, I won't bow down. We won't bow down, Third Wave Whittier. We won't bow down to what the system wants us to believe or what the system wants us to act like, what the system is and the standards of the system that they're putting over us. We won't bow down. We're called to something great. We're called to something that's going to be greater than whatever you even imagine in your own sight. We won't bow down. But before we start, I'm going to do a little prayer. There we are. Why don't you just close your eyes? Thank you, God, for this time. Speak to us today. In the name of Jesus, amen. And while I was reading this scripture, I was noticing some things. I was noticing some flaws that there was within the life of King Neb. See, there were some certain characteristics that were different from him and from Daniel and from Sadrach, Meshach, Abednego, there was something different. But what I also noticed about this is that this wasn't his first encounter with them. This wasn't the first time he saw them, he was with them, but he had an encounter before that where they said, we're not going to bow, we're not going to eat or consume what you're consuming, but we're going to consume what our God has ordained us to consume. Like the day of today, we have to be people that know that we're not going to consume what the world consumes, but we're different. There's something that sets us apart from everybody else. There's something that is going to set you apart. You, you have a shine to yourself that's different than everybody else. And we really have to know this within our life. We have to understand this within our life that we have no idol, but we worship God. And see, King Neb, he would worship his idols. He would set up idols, and those idols were his God. But, see, Daniel and, 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 and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, they knew who their God was. They needed no idol. They needed, we don't need no idol. We don't need Travis Scott. We don't need, uh, we don't need anybody else. We don't need Nicki Minaj. We don't need artists. We don't need Brad Pitt. We don't need nobody of them. We don't need those idols. We have our God. And this is what King Neb set up. He put an, he put a, he put an idol before the people so they can worship the idol. What's funny about the idol is that back in the day when they would make idols, the idol was just gold-plated. That means just the outward looked shiny. But the inward, what was the inward made of? Usually of any other metal. Whatever, just put whatever and just put a gold over it and it'll be good. Like our generation, just put some golds, put some sparkles around it and it'll look good. And if it looks good, the people are going to consume it. And see, King Neb... Put up an altar, put up an idol, and, and just put it in gold. It looks shiny. It looked good for everybody else. But we had some three people that weren't that weren't willing to just bow down to anything. That weren't willing to, to just bow down to anything. Nebuchadnezzar raised up an idol that showed us what he really idolized. And something I noticed that he idolized was the idol of self. He idolized his own life. He idolized what he can do. He idolized what, what he was over. He idolized what he had. He idolized himself. He idolized what was in his heart 
and what was in his heart became his truth. We can't let what our heart believes or our heart is feeling to become our truth. But we have Shadrach, we have Meshach, we have Abednego. They're over there. They might not have all the money. They might not have the best shoes. They not might have the best gold chain. Maybe their gold chain was plated. But they didn't value what other people valued, but they valued as truth the word of God. And just as the day of today, we don't value what our heart values and we don't put it as our truth, but our heart is wicked and what we value is the word of what God is speaking to us. That's what we have to value. We have to value just as them, the word, what God says about me. We can see in past chapters, there in Daniel chapter 1, verse 8, it says, But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not contaminate himself with the portion of the king. I'm not going to eat what you eat. I'm not going to consume what you consume. I have my own plate. I have my own laws. I, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm not going to follow you. Because they value what God said more than what the king thought. They valued even what God said more than their own life. And we're going to see that forward, and we saw it back there as well. We have to be people that recognizes that God's plan is much better than your plan. When you value God's word, you value God's plan. Because you know he spoke it to you, and whatever he speaks is truth. And whatever he speaks is life. And whatever he speaks, you have to walk in it. They valued the word of God. They valued the commandment of God. And they saw this as something much greater. Because his thoughts are greater than my thoughts. And his plans are greater than my plan. I have a plan. Right? Everybody has a plan. Once I finish high school, I'm going to go into college. And after that, I'm going to work. And after that, I'm just going to have a lot of money. Yeah, after I have a lot of money, I'm going to buy the best shoes. And after I have a lot of money, I'm going to buy the best house. And uh, after that, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. But God brought you today to tell you that there's another plan. That there's another plan. And I'm not saying that's wrong. See, it's good. But you have to value the plan of God a lot more than yourself as well. This is going to bring something different to your life. See, because when we value God's plan more than our plan, then we start to walk in faith. Then we start to make decisions that look a little bit risky, right? Go to the UTC? What is that all about? What do you mean be staff at the UTC? I, I think they don't pay them, right? <laughs> I don't know if I want to be part of that. Go to the UTC six months without my phone? Oh, my phone is my idol. When they take away your phone, you're shaking. Like, <laughs> see, but when we believe in the plan of God and we believe in the decisions that we take within God, it's when we start to step out of faith. It's when, it's when we start to step out in faith and take a different route. And that route is what takes us to success. And that route's what's going to take us forward. And that route's what's going to bring victory to your life. And you're going to feel different. And you're going to talk different. And you're going to think different. And you're going to win different. And it's going to be totally different for your life. Because you know that God's plan is better than my plan. And I'm not talking about the song. I'm not talking about God's plan. No, I'm talking about our God's plan. And we have to take these faith decisions that are sometimes kind of hard and kind of scary. I'm not going to tell you it's easy, but when you take those steps of faith, you start to see that God starts to provide. Not just provide, he starts to give you even more than what you had. I have more than what I had back in the past. I, had, I have more now because now I have something that's within me, something different within my heart, something that gives me purpose, something that it's different. It's different. I feel happy if I don't have anything, if I have a lot. Why? Because I have God with me. I worship my God. I'm not going to worship your idols. 
That's what we have to say to the world. Take his word as a truth. And when you have his word as a truth, you take his promises as reality. But it's only when you take his word as truth is when the promises become reality within your life. That's going to become reality within your life. But I know they wouldn't have done this on their own. And that's why I am so grateful for community. I am so grateful that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had a friend called Daniel that said, we are not going to eat what you are eating, but we are different from you. And we're going to do what we do because we follow our God. We don't follow your God. We're going to do something different. I'm so grateful for people that are like that within our life. Community here in Third Wave Whittier. Community that's going to tell you, oh, you're tired? Don't worry. I'll go for you. Oh, you're tired? Don't worry. After that, we're going to go eat. Let's go to service. After gang service, let's just go eat some canes. Let's just go eat some in and out. I'm gonna, you, I, I'll pay for you. That, maybe God wants to speak to you. Pay for someone else's meal tonight. And I'm so grateful for community because community is what brings us uh, unity within our life. And we have people that's aside with us that when we raise our hand, they raise their hand. And when we feel down, they pick us up. I'm so grateful for community, and I can't stop to think about a lame man. Do you guys remember that story? A lame man that was, he was, can I sit? Is that okay? Okay, I'm going to sit right here. And I, and I like the story of a lame man that could not walk. His feet were lame. It doesn't really say what, if his feet, just his feet, Right? I'm going to suppose that it wasn't his feet. It was everything. And he couldn't walk. I'm going to stand up. Okay. So he couldn't walk. He couldn't move. But see, oh, okay, prepare the laps. There. And he couldn't walk and he couldn't see and he couldn't do anything. But I'm so grateful that we have community, people that are around us. People that looked at him, looked at him and saw him there and said, you're, you're, you're lame, but we're going to be with you throughout all the season. He might have been old. There might have been days. It might have been a lot of time, but they were there with him. It says that these lame, these, these, this lame man, he had some friends that were willing to pick him up. That we're willing to pick him up. He might, he might have felt like there was no purpose for his life. He might have even felt like Jesus is coming to the city. I don't think Jesus can do something within my life. Because I've been all my life like this. I've been all my life like that. I feel like this. I feel like that. I think I can't let go of my addiction. I think I can't let go of, of, of that relationship. I think I can't do that. But I'm so grateful for people that say, no, you can do it. No, you can do it. They picked them up. They took them with Jesus. And there, with community, with Third Wave Whittier, that says, we're going to pick you up. We're going to take you there. You're going to receive something new. Because Jesus is in the room. I'm so grateful for community that was willing to pick me up when I didn't feel good. I had times where I didn't feel good, where I didn't feel like I was going to be able to make it. I had times where I didn't feel to, I didn't want to go to church. But I'm so grateful for a leader that just sent me a message and said, hey, I wait for you in church today. Come on, God's going to speak today. Come on, God's going to speak a word today. And now today, I can walk in testimony. I can walk in faith. I can speak about these things. Why? Because there was community willing to take me. Daniel set him up for victory. The leaders are setting you up for victory. The third wave team is setting you up for victory. So you can go and you can, and you can grow. I'm so grateful for community. But there was also an idol that he had within his life. And this was the other idol. And it was the idol of recognition. I want to be recognized. I want to be on the flyer. I want them to see me. I want that when you guys look at that idol, 
you would just be reminded that I'm over all of you guys. I'm the one that's going to be recognized. But why was it gold-plated? It was gold-plated maybe because he was just image. And he just worried about his image. He wanted people to recognize him as he recognized himself. That kind of sounds like our generation. If I recognize myself like this, you have to recognize me like that. If I see myself like this, you have to do it and you have to follow through as well. He wanted people to recognize him as he recognized himself. And we live in a generation that thinks like that. That sometimes don't even have their own identity. Their identity is in crisis. Their identity is in crisis and they don't even know what they want to do. They don't even know if they're like this or they're like that or what do I do? And us as a generation, we know where our identity comes from. King Neb wanted the people to recognize him. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego wanted the people to recognize their God. King Neb set his value on what was material. Because he thought that the materialistic things would make him different. He thought just because on the outside it looked good, that would make him different. Sometimes we think, and and, and as a generation, as a total generation, that what we have on the outside, what we wear on the outside, what we put on the outside is going to make us feel different on the inside. But on the inside, we're the same person. On the inside, we're the same person. We might not be the most talented. We might not be the the cutest. We we might not be the best spoken. We might not be the best in preaching. We might not be the best MC. We might not be the best worshiper. We might not be the best. But I'm so grateful that God sees us as the same. He sees the inside. And even though you don't have everything, he sees you as what you are and what you can become. He sees the finished image. He sees the polished image. So even if you yourself don't know how to identify yourself, let, I want to let you know that God already identified you as someone. He already made you as someone. He already put purpose and he put destiny within your life. He already saw your future and he saw that it would be great. And he saw that he would rise you up. And he saw all these things within your life. Just take, just know that God has already identified you. He set you apart from everybody else. That's why you're here tonight. That's why you're here tonight hearing this message. That's why you're here tonight hearing this message that's speaking to you, that you have a place to be. Third wave Whittier, you can come back. We will receive you one more time. Here God's going to speak to you. Here God's going to place purpose in you. Here God's going to place a word within you. And one day you're not just going to be the one that's receiving, but you're the one that's going to be giving. Because God already saw the finished product and God already is doing something within your life. Don't set your value on what's material. And this is what King Neb thought as well. See, King Neb thought because he identified himself like that, it was like that. Not, if you identify yourself as a good man, doesn't make you a good man. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew their value was set by God and by his word. They trusted in promises that have been spoken to them. They trusted in what God has already spoken to their life. They trusted in all these things because they valued more the word than what they valued even their self. They knew that the pattern wasn't their identity. But God set their identity. It says that all the nations were in one place. All the nations were reunited in one place. Everybody was seeing them there, and everybody was following a pattern. 
everybody was doing the same thing and talking the same thing. And, and when, when you walk out, out, out of this church and you walk into a store or you walk into a club or wherever you're going to walk to, you're going to see that everybody thinks about the same thing, talks about the same thing, and they just do the same thing. And they never get tired of doing the same thing. Yeah, they're 29 and, yeah, it's cool. Let's go. Let's go get drunk. You're 29, bro. It's time. It's time. You settle down. They never get tired of doing the same thing. But when we're with God, when we're with God, we still have steps to take forward. We still have a destiny. There's still more progress. We might not look good. We might not speak good. But God is going to polish you so you can become what he has called you to be. And if he called you to be a preacher, then you're going to preach. And if he called you to be a worshiper, then you're going to worship. And you can keep on growing and you have a purpose and you feel fulfilled and you feel like there's destiny within your heart. And now you don't feel like you used to feel. Now you're not looking for that guy. Now you're not looking for that girl. Yet now you're not looking for the money. Now you're not looking for nothing else, but you're just looking for the promise of God. And when you walk in the promise of God, that's when he starts to raise you up. And then all of a sudden, God starts to speak to the nations and he says, you're going to go out and you're going to go out and you're going to go to this city and that's where we take our place as victory outreach international we take our place around the nations not just here one day you can be here but tomorrow you can be in brazil one day you can be here but tomorrow you can be in amsterdam one day you can be here but tomorrow you'll be in south africa why because we have a destiny we have a future and we have a vision let god write your story let God write your story and the pattern that he wants to set over your life. And they said, I'm not going to conform to your pattern, King Neb. It looks interesting. It looks good. It looks like I can be a part of that. But I'm not going to walk in what you are going to tell me to walk in. They said, I won't bow down. I won't bow down. Daniel chapter 3 verse 17 to 18. We're going to read right there very fast, very quick. It says, if it be so our God whom you serve, who we serve is able to rescue us from the furnace of blazing fire and he will rescue us from your hand, O king. 18. But even if he does not, let it be known to you, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. But what was the response of King Neb? It says like this, Daniel 3 Verse 23, verse 25, it says 23. But these three men, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell into the midst of the furnace of blazing fire, still tied up. 24, then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astounded, and he jumped up and said to the counselors, Did we not throw three men into the midst of the furnace? Into the midst of the fire? Didn't we just throw three? It was one, two, three. And now I see a four? We're, we're, imagine. He's, whoa, whoa. I saw three. And then it says in 25, he answered, look, I see four men untied walking around in the midst of the fire. And they are not hurt. And the appearance of the fourth is like the son of God's. The appearance of the fourth is like the son of God's. He was there with them. He was there with them in the midst of the fire. And I love this story. Why? Because the fire that they had within was stronger than the fire that was outside. The fire that we have today is stronger than the fires of the outside, of the outwards, of what wants to burn us, of what wants to take us down. The fire that's shot in within my bones is different than the fire that's outside of me. I can see complications. I can see stuff going wrong. I can see like this is going wrong in my life. But there's a fire within my bones that doesn't let me be quiet. That doesn't let me shut up. But it tells me to go forward and to keep following the calling of God. There's a fire within my bones that's not going to stop just because you want to stop it. 
The world wants to stop and wants to turn off your fire, wants to extinguish your fire because they're going to tell you that you look weird because you're going to third wave Whittier. You look weird taking your Bible. Just take the Bible app, bro. Why would you buy a Bible? Just use the Bible app. They're going to tell you that you look weird doing what you're doing. And they're going to tell you as well, weren't you the one that was over there? You weren't the one that was doing everything else. You were in the club, no? It wasn't you. You were over here. It, was, it wasn't you. Uh, but now you're this. But now you're different. But now you, your face shines differently. But now you're not looking for anything, nobody. Why all of a sudden, if you said you were going to go back to him, you never went back to him? Why all of a sudden, if you said you were going to just go back for her, why didn't you do that? Are you, what's different in you? And what's different is that when you're walking, there's a fire within you. There's a Holy Spirit within you that it might look complicated. It might look like you're never going to do it. It might look like you're not the one for the task. It might look like there's nothing more for your life. It might look like uh, uh, the doors are just shutting before you, but there's a fire within you that doesn't just let you stay there. But it lets you go forward. And when they speak to you, they see a different person. They see a different person. I love it that they said, I won't bow down. I deny to submit to your standard. To your way of thinking, I deny to submit to it. There was a pattern back in those days, and there's a pattern today as well. And that's the pattern which we are not going to submit to. It says in Romans 12, too, that we don't conform to this pattern of this world, but we are different. And we are renewing through, the, through our mind. We're progressively transforming. We're getting better and better and better and better. And God keeps on growing and growing and growing and growing your life. Don't submit to a standard. They knew that what they had, every else, everybody else needed. They said, I'm not going to bow down to what you want me to bow down. And if the piano can come up as well. I'm not going to bow down to your standard and what you're thinking because I know that all the nations, every nation has to see what's burning within my heart. Everybody needs Jesus Christ. Everybody needs to be transformed. They might not say it. They might lie to themselves. They might go to a service. You might be here in this service right now. And you think maybe you're not, this is not for you. You've been thinking of quitting and quitting and quitting and quitting, but for some reason you haven't stepped back. And this is what they said. They said, I'm not going to bow down. I'm not going to bow down to what you want me to do. I'm going to take a stance. I'm going to go forward. I still have more to do. I'm not going to bow down to you. And you can throw me to the fire. You can burn what's on the outward because I don't really care about that. It says that they threw them with their robes into the fire. It's like if they throw you with your Balenciaga sweater. Bal Balenciaga. I'm going to say it with a tone like an American, you know. I'm Mexican. But it's like if they threw them with their best robes within the fire. And they said, man, the outward can burn. I can die. Whatever can happen to me. But within me, there's a fire that's stronger than that. And within me, there's a destiny that's stronger than, than what you want to put me forward. Within me, there's something that's just burning. And I, and I just love this scripture. And I want to leave it with you tonight. And it says in Jeremiah 
chapter 20, verse 7 to 9. And it says like this, Jeremiah was going through a season where he felt like there was no more. He, he just wanted to die. He was in a season of depression. He was in a season of anxiety. He was in a season where he felt attacked. But it says like this, and it says, Oh Lord, you have persuaded me, and I was deceived. You are stronger than I. You have prevailed. I am a laugh stocking all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must shout out. I shout violence and destruction because of the word of the Lord has become to me a reprimand and a mockery and has brought me insult all day long. If I say, he was passing through this season, but there was something that was happening within him. It says, I will not remember him. If I say, I will not remember him or speak his name anymore, then my heart becomes a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I am weary of enduring and holding it in. I cannot endure it anymore. There's a fire burning within our heart. That even if you decide to take another route, even if you decide to do your own thing, even if you decide to, what's in your heart is so much stronger. And it says, this fire that's within me. I cannot shut it. I need to speak about Jesus. I need to speak about his plan. I need to speak about his purpose. There's a fire within me that wants to speak about his greatness. There's a fire that's within me that wants to speak about what he did. There's a fire that's within me that wants to speak into the nations. There's a fire that's within me that wants to speak to the whole world. And it says like that, that Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego went into the fire. And then there was a fourth one with them inside. It was God himself with them inside. And they came out of the fire and they were ready. And it says also that King Neb, after he saw that and the nation saw that and everybody saw that, just like when people saw you, when people saw you changed, when you went out of Third Way Whittier and there was a difference within your life and when you leave this service that there's a difference within your life, people around you are going to see it. There's something different within him. There's something different within her. And that's when you walk and you have a new purpose. And it says that King Neb looked at that. And he said, I have a new decree. Every nation that is here and every nation that's represented around here. Every heart that's in, in this place, everybody that's here, everybody, we are going to bow down just to their God. Because his God is greater. Because his God is stronger. Because his God brought them out of the miry fire and left them unharmed. Because your God is greater. Because your God is stronger. Because your God has purpose for you. Because there's still more in the walk. This is not the end, third wave with you. There's still much more that God wants to do through you guys. This is just the start of what he wants to do. Yes, you got saved. Yes, he transformed you, but there's still more. And why don't you stand up to your feet today? There's a fire within our soul. That's going to make us go forward. That's going to make us grow. There's a fire within your soul. For all those leaders that have grown weary, this is not the end. There's still more that God wants to do. And if you're part of those that, hey, I don't even understand what you're saying. What are you talking about? Today you can receive what God wants to give you. Today you can receive something new. And it's going to start through you raising up your hands. First time you're going to feel maybe like everybody's looking at me, nobody's looking at you. 
nobody's looking at you. And in this place, why don't everybody, we shut our eyes here. And in three seconds, I'm going to open the altar. And we're going to receive something new today. We're going to receive a fire today. There where we are. Three, two, one. If you want to come to the altar, the altars are open. And if you're here in the altar, if you're back there, just raise up your hands and close your eyes. We're going to receive from God today. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. God, we won't bow down. We won't bow down to what the system wants to make us believe. We won't bow down to the standard. Today, we're going to receive something different from you, oh Lord. Oh, there's a fire within our heart. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Oh, you got a lion inside of those songs. Get up and praise the Lord. Oh, come on, my soul. Come on, my soul. Oh, my soul. oh hallelujah, hallelujah. God's in this place. Raise up your hands. God's in this place. He's going to start to do something. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Wow, what an on-time word that was. And we know that you felt challenged and provoked. And maybe right now you're asking, God, what more do you have for my life? Well, here's a perfect opportunity for you to accept him into your life. You can repeat this prayer right after me. Lord, I believe that you died for me. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Now come into my life in Jesus' name. Amen. And we know that heaven is rejoicing right now as you said that prayer. So we pray that we see you right back here at Victory Outreach Whittier. God bless you.